Hello and welcome to episode 92 on the Everyday Joy podcast. Today's episode is dedicated to anyone who is praying for the right life partner. We've done a few episodes on the Everyday Joy podcast that just covers some of the struggles, the joys, the highs and lows of being single. And if today's episode really resonates with you, do go back and have a listen to other episodes around that. Definitely would recommend going back and listening to episode two titled Single and Waiting. Now, Geek Story isn't necessarily the story of someone who is single and yearning to be in a relationship. Her story is quite different, but I'm not going to spoil too much of it anymore. Let's get into today's Bible verse. Commit everything you do to God. Trust Him to help you and He will. Our commitment to God must be consistent. This is found in Psalms chapter 37, verse 5 from the Living Bible. I've got Gig once again here in studio with me. Gig, so good to chat with you again. I'm having so much fun and this is unravelling a lot here. So I hope your listeners are really getting into this. Yeah, I've learned a lot about you. <laughs> I've learned that you love bearded men. I mean, I, I knew that mm-hmm. because I met your husband recently yep. and it was so glorious and lustrous. I almost wanted to pat it, but <laughs> I thought, no, Joy, don't be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I understand that. I have to, yeah, in public, don't touch him. Don't touch him. <laughs> yep. Has he ever surprised you by shaving off his beard? Well, when I first met Steve, he had no beard. Um, he had coloured hair. Um, I actually met him through my sister who was a hairdresser. Oh. So he had, he was, I mean, we got married, oh, I was 30-something, he was 40-something. And so we were later in life and he started colouring his hair and, um, and I when his hair started to grow through, I said, you have the most beautiful coloured hair. Mm. Um, Can you stop colouring it? Because it was salt and pepper. Yeah, it's a beautiful colour. And it's a great colour. Yeah. And then a little while later, I went, oh, you should grow your beard. And so we grew a goatee. And then I coaxed him into a little bit more, and now he's got a full-blown, oh, it's just stunning. It's magnificent. It is. It's quite a beard. It is. <laughs> and he's not allowed to cut it off. Our girls were like, nope, because if I'm trimming him up, he goes, the girls are like, you're not cutting off Dad's beard, are you? They watch you. Yep, they watch yeah. me like a hawk. <laughs> so they're, they're going to be beard lovers as well. Now, something I would love to talk about a bit later is how you met your husband, the journey of learning to love someone else. I know that's been a pretty big part of your life, so we'll get to that later. Yep. But today we're taking a look at committing everything you do to God. Trust him to help you and he will. Yeah. Our commitment to God must be consistent. What are your first impressions of this one, Gig? Oh, I'm hopeless at this, Joy. For someone who is so fiercely independent, um, I find this very challenging. I'm a bullet gate and I run with everything. This is an idea. Run with it. Go, go, go. Then I sit back and go, oh, God, did I do that the right way? I should have come to you. That was a bit tricky. Um, so... I need to stop and reflect, definitely. I remember a while back, uh, I had a manager and he was having a, a moment where he was trying to explain to me the different office dynamics. And he said, there's two kinds of people. There's the woes and there's the giddy ups. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Yeah. So you're the, you're the, you're the whoa. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can be a bit more of a giddy up, I think. I don't know. So another thing I love to ask Gig is what this verse tells you about who God is or what he values. Yep. What's that for you? Um, this God is unlike anything I've ever experienced in my journey of growing up. So my parents and people around me, he wants to know and be involved in every single detail. Mm. Our mundane in and out things that we deal with every single day where people are so busy, they can't be bothered with what you're getting up to and what you're doing. Just like we can't be bothered with them. We know we're all busy, but God wants to be in every situation, the silent situations, the loud situations, the hard situations every step of the way. Mm. I know that we touched a little earlier about how you met your husband and and all of that. Um, You were single for a long period of time. Could you share a little bit about that journey? Because I really feel like there'll be a lot of listeners who are looking at this verse and they're thinking and who may come from a background where they haven't seen a lot of that as you have gig. What would be... First of all, would you share a little bit of that story okay. and relate this verse in with that? Okay. Um, I was never going to get married. Never. Um, in my early 20s, I decided I loved children and I was going to foster. So I went, forget about men. They're all jerks. I don't want to borrow them. I don't want to have to deal with it. Marriage is hard. Marriage is painful. Marriage is, is killing people's lives and it's damaging children. I don't want to bar. Mm. Um, so I started fostering. 
and uh, that was an amazing, hard, crippling terrible beautiful horrible scary terrifying journey um for another another chapter um and i sort of was getting on into my 30s and i had someone pull me aside at church and said gig you need to really get over yourself and stop being so selfish and i said excuse me they said there is a man out there that deserves you Mm. and so that just put a spin on it it wasn't about what I could put into someone's life. It was someone out there that deserved me. Those words, somebody deserves me. (gasps) That changed my life. Mm. Changed my life. I went and had prayer counselling and it replaced so many pivoting times in my life where I switched off. It was the first time, I think, Joy, where I actually stood back and went, God, I'm giving this to you. That was scary, letting go, because I had the reins of every area of my life. I was in control. I was feisty. I was um, savvy. um, I was sassy. And everyone knew gig. But when it came to me slowing down and actually listening and words being spoken into my life, I think that was a really pivoting point. And then going into the counselling. And then it was within a year that I met Steve. Mm. I think for a lot of us listening, we've in some way, shape or form have had to commit something scary to God. Yep. I've had a lot of friends who have fallen pregnant and they're like, well, okay, I do not know what's on the other side of this. I'm committing this to you. Yep. Uh, people moving countries, starting new jobs, making big decisions around their relationships or their finances. There's so many areas that we are invited to commit to God. And yes, we can commit the little things to God. And we've done an episode on that. But also committing the big things, the Mm. scary things, the ones that make our heart ache. And you've done that gig. And I'm so happy to (laughs) to meet, to actually meet in flesh your gloriously bearded husband um, and your beautiful girls as well. But it all came from that one moment of committing something pretty scary. Finally, yeah. yeah. Gig, what would you say to someone who is struggling to trust God because maybe this is an area in their life where they felt that maybe things haven't been consistent, where things have been scary, where they're afraid to hope and trust and believe again. What would be your thought encouragement to that person to give it over to God again? Okay, Joy, my encouragement would be start small. Start with the daily, start with the small things. Because we, we never hand over the small things. We only we get to the big stuff when it's all too much and then we hand it over when we realise it's never too late to hand over. But it's a really good way to get into a routine every morning. Lord, this is your day. And realise what, what do you need to hand over and mm. start with the small. I know that you start your day by saying something like that. Could you model that or just say what you would say when you wake up in the morning for someone who might have never done anything like this before? <laughs> I'm a dot point form person. I'm very brief when I speak, when I give directions. And some mornings I will get up and go, God, you've got me. You've got this. Holy Spirit, you know what I've got to think about today. You've got this. And I know I don't have to sit there and go on about things forever because God knows. He just wants me to acknowledge that I've acknowledged him. And I think that's the power step. Right at the start of this episode, I really wanted to dedicate this whole conversation to anyone who's in the single season, or more specifically, someone who's really disappointed and in the single season. Maybe you've been single for a while, maybe something that you really thought would work out hasn't, maybe you've been ghosted, which is awful, by the way, we need to stop doing that. Um, Maybe for you, you've just had such a rough go of it. And I just wanted to really bless you with this conversation because when it came to Gig's pivotal moment, it was these words of affirmation that changed the way she saw herself, which changed the way she approached God about it. That person said to her, someone is out there who deserves you. Now, I don't know what uh, your future holds. I don't know that. But the one thing I do know is that you have value. 
And maybe some life experiences have made you feel like you don't, made you feel like maybe it's best that you don't pray about this or believe in this anymore because you somehow feel you're not worthy of having a healthy relationship or worthy of being in a marriage or being a mum or something like that. And again, I don't know what your future holds, but I do know that you have value. I do know that God sees you as his child and God loves you. And sometimes we have to choose to make that commitment to trust him again in an area of our life where we've felt a lot of disappointment. And maybe for you, trusting God is a tough thing, especially in that area of your life, be it singleness or something else that has been a really difficult thing for you. Like Gig said, just trust God with the small things. Hand little things over to him bit by bit and you'll see that day by day as you do that, your relationship with him will become more consistent. Your relationship with him will become stronger and you in turn will be changed. You in turn will become stronger too. Well, that wraps up today's episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. Before I wrap up, I do actually want to say one more thing. If you are enjoying this podcast, don't forget to leave a written five-star review. It helps more people discover this podcast and ultimately helps more people learn of a God who absolutely adores them. And that's what this podcast is all about. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. 